take a look at this. Same circuit, built as a studio type amplifier on a Hammond chassis. Underneath is the OptiPlex board. Now this one has it. In this video, we're gonna convert this Lafayette HA52 police radio into a Class A guitar amp with the OptiPlex feature. So volume will stay the same, squelch will become tone, and the tuning will become the OptiPlex. So here's the back side of the radio. I will be reusing the main power transformer, but pretty much everything else will be leaving for the amp build. This tuning cap, tubes, and the IF transformers all have to come out because that's where my output tube and preamp section are gonna reside. This main filter cap is obviously bad. I'm gonna replace that with a new one and keep it in that location. I do plan to add a switch where the internal speaker can be utilized again. Backside, we're gonna be adding some jacks for the speaker and other switching. All right, bottom side, I'm pretty much gonna gut this thing out. All of this is gonna interfere with the mounting of the new PCBA Optiplex board. And my preamp tube will sit here, and my output tube would be in this area. I will be reusing the power transformer and these diodes and the old original output transformer. It's gonna be a cool build. So what's the best way to get started? Grab your wire cutters and start clipping out the components. Okay, I've got everything stripped out. This is where the tuning cap used to reside. I'm gonna be installing an aluminum plate there. I'm gonna put some standoffs for the Optiplex board. New socket for the 12AX7. We'll be ready to start wiring. Okay, I got my filler plate installed. So we're gonna have a 12AX7 here and we're gonna have a 6V6 here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave these IF cans. I think they look cool. The tube sockets will be 1960s vintage cinch. I might as well keep this thing in the right era. Here's a visual for you top side. Got the new filter cap installed. 6V6 socket and 12AX7 socket. Let's take a look underneath. All right, bottom side, everything's been removed except for the rectifier diodes and the output transformer. Here is the new Optiplex board installed. There's the Optiplex control. This is my tone control, which is a 500K, and the volume control is actually a one meg, just like you would expect. It's really gonna come together nice. Okay, I'm gonna wire up the power supply and then we'll cut back. You'll see that there's some areas on the Optiplex board that are not populated. That's because this was an all-in-one board. So it had the rectifiers and the filter caps on this board, but, since we are using an external filter cap and rectification, I'll simply be swinging the power supply DC lines over to the Optiplex board. Here's a little information that you'll need to know if you're gonna modify one of these radios. Number one, there is no AC fuse on these, so you're gonna to have to add one, either internal or chassis mount on the back. Then, this output transformer has a little hidden secret. If you take it out, and look, you'll see that it had outputs for 4 and 8 ohm. They only used the 8 and they cut the 4 ohm off. If you're really careful, you can hook that back up and have a amp with 4 and 8 ohm outputs. All right, progress report. I've got the 6V6 installed, the 12AX7 filter cap. And underside, I've got the power supply wired, so we're going to test it. At this point... I want to verify the power supplies in the amplifier before I do the final wiring. So I got my meter set at DC volts. I'm across the high voltage. I'm loading that with a 20K resistor. Filament circuits are wired. I'm gonna bring up the amp on a variac and see what we get. So I'm gonna turn her up right now. You can see my high voltage over there. 60 volts applied. There's 90 volts applied, and there's 120. So my high voltage is approximately 232 volts. You can see the dial lamp illuminated. 
So all my power supplies are working. It's time to get that Optiplex board wired up. The Lafayette HA52 police radio conversion to guitar amp is complete. This is a Class A amplifier running a 6V6. My controls, this is still volume with the power switch. Squelch is now tone and the tuning is the Optiplex control. So all the way over is like a Fender Deluxe. Straight up is like a Champ and over here is Marshall. Let's take a look backside. Here's the backside of the amp. Simple tube line up, 12AX7 preamp into a 6V6 running Class A. Reuse the original power transformer. Got a new filter cap and if you look here you see the output transformer is now on the top of the chassis. I had some issues with that I'm going to go into in a few minutes. Down here we have the speaker outputs, got 4 and 8 ohm. And then this little switch turns on the internal 4 inch cheesy speaker that came with the radio. Bottom side of the amp, I'm going to start over here and we'll work our way across. I installed a grounded power cord and a fuse to protect the power transformer. This transformer puts out about 330 volt center tap. So after it's rectified, you end up with around 235 volts DC. From there, we go to the filter cap, and I go through a 220 ohm resistor, and then that feeds the plate to the 6V6. Now if you remember, the output transformer used to reside right here. When I initially tested the amp, I heard low level AC hum. So what was happening is that transformer was inducing right into the volume control. There's really no way around it, so I decided, okay, we'll relocate it to the top of the chassis. And it's actually in a better spot because now it feeds the speaker jacks. All right, moving across, we've got the D-Lab PCBA Optiplex board. So this is the Class A driver. It supports the 12AX7 and the 6V6 tube. So you simply connect your wires to the tube sockets and the controls and you got an amp. This is the Optiplex pot. This is the 500K tone pot and the one meg volume pot. These were stock with the radio and also utilize vintage cinch sockets. So I'm sure you noticed that there are some components missing on the PCBA Optiplex board. Normally, this was an all-in-one design, meaning the power supply was integrated with the Class A driver section. Okay, In this case, I'm using the diodes on the transformer and an external filter capacitor. Otherwise, they would have been mounted on the board. So this would have been the two filter caps and the two diodes for rectification. If you decide that you want to build one of these amplifiers, but you're not going to utilize an external filter cap and diodes, they will be installed on the board. Let's concentrate on the preamp tube. I just want to show you a couple items. Here on pin 7 and pin 2, you'll see some coax. This is RG274. I always use coax when I have long runs of signals. In this case, pin 7 is going over to the volume control. Pin 2, though, you'll see the 68K grid resistor going to the center conductor, and the shield is tied to the chassis right next to the preamp tube. From there, that coax runs across the chassis to this cliff jack. Now, there used to be a standard quarter inch jack that would screw right to the chassis. What I find on these type builds is due to the chassis ground at this point, running over here through other mechanical devices and getting to the preamp tube will pick up noise. Okay, And that was the case here. So what I do is I remove that jack, I install a clip jack, and this guy is floating. So it is not tied to ground here. The ground is actually over here next to the preamp tube which stops that ground loop and eliminates the hum. Well, here's a tip. If you want to use these original knobs that came with the radio, 
Keep in mind that the shafts on the Japanese pots were six millimeter into this little brass bushing. When you add your Optiplex control, this is a quarter inch shaft. So this knob won't go on. So I had to actually drill out that little brass insert to a quarter inch. Then I was able to keep the original knobs on the radio amp. She's powered up. You see the original dial lamp operates. I'm on an external speaker at this point. Bring the volume up all the way. Here's my tone. See, she's nice and quiet. Let's get a looper hooked up and you can hear this amp play. Since I don't have anybody at this point to play the amp, but at least you can hear what it does. So right now I'm hooked up to the external speaker. We'll bring her on. Here's my tone. Now we'll play with the Optiplex. So you can hear those changes. Now remember, the Optiplex is not a tone control. It is a bandwidth control. This is your tone. All right, now for the fun of it, I flipped on the rear switch so we can listen to that high quality four inch speaker that came with the radio. It's cute, but you sure wouldn't want to play out in a club with it. Well, let's give this little guy a final look over. You can see the original case installed. I love the colors. Nice 60s appeal. Let's take a look around the back. Backside, got those IF cans. Now, yes, they're going to be in the way if you want to change your 6v6, so the top will have to pop off. You got your speaker jacks here for 4 and 8 internal speaker on and then this terminal board is abandoned in place. It's got a nice bottom panel with these large rubber feet. So if you're in the market to build yourself your first boutique amp, I would highly recommend finding one of these receivers. There's a lot of hidden bonuses. You get to use the original power transformer, the original output transformer, the cabinet, the knobs, and guess what? There's a 12AX7 on that chassis, but it's normally not good. Now that you've seen the Optiplex board built in this vintage police radio, take a look at this. Same circuit, built as a studio type amplifier on a Hammond chassis. Underneath is the Optiplex board. Now this one has the filter caps. This is the all-in-one application. Your power transformer, tubes, and controls simply land on that board and you've got a cool boutique amp. If you're interested in one of these complete or if you just want to buy a board and build your own, contact me at DLab Electronics.